Auto color, auto contrast, and auto levels are all found under the color correction category. And they're really designed to work with footage because they can evaluate multiple frames of a clip. And each one tries to adjust the image balance across that clip so that it's not only corrected, but also balanced. So let's start with auto levels and we'll look at the controls. So as soon as I apply this auto levels to this clip of a panda, the image drastically changes. And that's because if I turn it off, it's pretty obvious now that this image is kind of washed out and not white balanced. Now this might be intentional from the person who filmed this. It could even be color graded, but clearly we're used to seeing a panda as more white than this washed out yellowy green tint. If I turn auto levels back on, we get something that looks much more like what we're expecting. And to show what's actually happening here, I'm going to bring out a levels effect right after auto levels, just so we can see the histogram. And if you're not familiar with the histogram, what this is, is a representation of the luminance values of all of the pixels across our image. So this bunch right here is telling me that there are a lot of pixels in the darks and blacks of this image. Everything between here and here is the darker parts of the image and everything between here and here are the brighter parts. Pure white on the right, pure black on the left. Since there's no spike at all on the left edge or on the right edge, that tells me this image doesn't have any pure black or pure white pixels in it. And normally to correct for this, I would just grab this handle right here to crush the blacks down a bit so we have pure black now bring this one up to have pure white, maybe even push it a little beyond, but I don't wanna to go too far because then I'm going to way overexpose it, but that's how I would correct for the overall contrast. From here, I need to work on the colors. Auto levels does all of this for me. So let me just reset that levels effect. Again, we're just using this as a visual for the histogram, but when I click this on, my histogram automatically updates and now I do have pure black pixels and pure white pixels. But why did the colors also update? Well, it's because not only is auto levels adjusting the brightness values of the color channels, it's actually mixing them to try and get a color balanced image. So it's looking at each individual channel, red, green, and blue, and making that same adjustment of taking the darks and making them pure black, the brights, making them pure white. And with a black and white animal like a panda, that neutralizes all of that color cast that was apparent in the uncorrected image and makes it look much more natural. Now, before we even take a look at the other controls, I'm just gonna show you the difference between this and the other two effects. So I'm going to bring out auto contrast now and shut off auto levels and just turn that off and back on to show you this is doing exactly what I was with the levels effect. It's just expanding the levels or crushing the contrast to make the brightest areas white and the darkest areas black, but it's doing it to all three channels combined, just like the levels effect set to RGB mode. This way, the actual color information isn't changing, just the luminance values. That's the only difference between auto contrast and auto levels. Now let's look at auto color. I'll apply that and we get something that again, looks pretty natural. This is also adjusting the color, not just the contrast, just like auto levels. The difference is that auto color is really designed for images that are already pretty well balanced in terms of their contrast. It can still adjust that contrast, but its primary function is for adjusting the colors. As we've seen, auto levels also does this color correction, but its primary purpose is for adjusting that contrast, but because it looks at each individual color channel, it actually can remove or in some instances introduce color casts. So in this case of a black and white panda that was pretty color cast already, it's neutralizing all of those color channels and balancing the colors as well as the contrast. And I realize this is really confusing because it seems like auto color is doing the same thing, but it really just depends on what you're applying it to. Just try to remember that auto color is really designed to adjust colors, not so much contrast. Auto levels is kind of designed to do both, and auto contrast does not touch color. It just increases the contrast to make blacks black and whites white. I hope that was clear. It was definitely hard for me to grasp at first, and I still get these mixed up sometimes. But now that we've looked at all three, let's take a look at their actual controls because almost all of them overlap through each effect. First of all, we have temporal smoothing, and this is measured in seconds. What this does is looks at the footage that you apply this to, and scans the frames around it by whatever value you have set here. So if I set this to one second, it's going to look at the surrounding one second worth of frames and see how the levels look in those frames before averaging out its adjustment between all of those and applying the effect. 
This is really great for footage that has lots of shadows and highlights that are changing, or maybe a camera that was set to auto, so the ISO or the exposure was flickering or adjusting. Adjusting this value can help balance those exposure changes out. In this clip, the exposure doesn't change at all and the lighting is consistent, so it's really not going to change anything. But because I increased it, you can see that we have this checkbox that's no longer grayed out called Scene Detect. And this is if you were to bring in a sequence, a, a movie file that already has a bunch of edited clips together. This effect is going to detect that there's a scene change at an edit point and not take the frames from a different clip into account with a temporal smoothing. All right, I'm gonna reset this effect. And then we have black and white clip. And this is basically a threshold for what this effect is actually going to adjust. So it's defaulted to 0.1%. So what this means is that the 0.1 darkest pixels in my image are going to be converted to pure black. And the same for the 0.1 brightest pixels, they're gonna be converted to pure white. So if I increase this number up to a maximum of 10, that's going to take the 10% darkest pixels and make that black and the 10% whitest pixels and blow them out. So it's a way to be able to just fine tune this a little bit. And if you didn't want to adjust the darkest pixels at all, if you know that there are already black pixels, then you'd wanna turn that all the way down to zero and the white all the way down to zero as well if there were already overexposed white pixels. I'm gonna reset that back to default because I think it does have a much better balanced image that way. And the only other option here is blend with original, which is just the effects transparency. All of those properties are shared with auto contrast, so we don't need to look at that, but auto color has one more option, which is snap neutral midtones. And if I check that box, what it's going to do is look for basically a midtone gray value in the image or something that it thinks should be midtone gray, and then snap it to that midtone gray value, basically adjusting all of the colors so that that becomes the neutral value. And if I check that back off and on, you see that it gets a little bit cooler and the colors actually do look a little bit more white balanced. So this can produce more natural looking colors. But with that, we've covered all the properties of these effects. They really are designed to work with footage, so they don't really show up much in motion design workflows, but they're definitely worth knowing about and understanding the differences between them. But that's all for auto color, auto contrast, and auto levels. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this tutorial, then check out the other ones here on my YouTube channel. And if you like my teaching style, then definitely check out my longer form content on Skillshare and School of Motion. And if you wanna support more tutorials like this one, check out my Patreon. You can find links for all that stuff in the description of this video.